So one of the reasons why we discuss allenes um, first is because uh, they're actually involved as intermediates in uh, alkyne isomerism. So uh, what happens in alkyne isomerism is that um, if you have an internal alkyne and you treat it with uh, a strong base, it actually isomerizes into a terminal alkyne. Uh, an example of this would be uh, 2-butyne. So if I take 2-butyne and I react it under strong acidic conditions, or excuse me, strong basic conditions, so here I have sodium amide in ammonia followed by an aqueous workup, um, the product of this reaction is 1-butyne. Now, um, how does this work? Well, let's take a look at the mechanism. Um, in the first step of this reaction, uh, we have, so I, I've simply drawn 2-butyne, and I've highlighted uh, one of the hydrogens um, that is uh, on the uh, uh, terminal carbon, right? So uh, we learned that alkynes, uh, alkyne hydrogens are relatively acidic. They have a pKa of about 28, um, uh, but hydrogens uh, that are um, adjacent to an alkyne are actually, well, somewhat acidic. Uh, their pKa is about 38, uh, and so these hydrogens can be deprotonated with a very strong base like sodium amide. And the reason for that, um, so uh, showing the curved arrow notation, right, we're removing a proton, the electrons go to that carbon and they create um, an anion and they also create ammonia. Now, ammonia has a pKa that's about 38 as well, and so you see that I'm using equilibrium arrows because um, if the reaction stopped here, this definitely you would definitely get a true equilibrium of a 50-50 mixture of the um, alkyne and its uh, anion. So this is the anion that's that's shown um, the conjugate anion uh, or conjugate base of the uh, two butyne. Now, this conjugate base. The reason for the acidity of 2-butyne is because the conjugate base, actually, um, we can draw a resonance structure of that conjugate base, right? Donating a pair of electrons in to form a double bond and taking one of the pi, uh, pi sets of electrons and placing it on the carbon as shown. And the resulting structure looks like this. So, uh, this is a, a very strong base, and it can be um, protonated by ammonia, because we're using ammonia as a solvent, and ammonia uh, is also a byproduct of the, uh, the first step. And so I can simply uh, remove a proton from ammonia, And I, re I get, um, I notice I regenerate the amide anion. And I end up with my allene, right? So this is where the allene is an intermediate in this isomerism process. So the allene itself is slightly acidic in that um, the hydrogens coming off of that terminal alkene um, have a pK also that's about 38, so they will react with the amide anion. Again, an equilibrium uh, is going to occur here, and you generate the uh, allene anion. Uh, and of course, you're also going to be generating uh, ammonia as well. Now, this um, allene uh, anion also has a resonance structure in which I can donate the pair of electrons to form a triple bond now, and the double bond on the left-hand side, one pair of electrons is going to go up to that carbon. And the structure looks like this. And so now you can start to see the formation, well, you see that formation of the triple bond there. Um, <clears throat> and all we have to do now is simply protonate that, and we can protonate that with ammonia, and we get our resulting 
um, one butyne. Now, one butyne, as we know, is very acidic. We, we've uh, learned this already in that the pKa of uh, terminal alkynes is 25, and so that's going to uh, react very readily with the amide um, ion, and we get the acetylide ion. <clears throat> and so at this stage, this is where the reaction basically stops, uh, producing, you know, where, when you have produced the acetylide ion. But, and, and of course, this is actually going to drive the, the, the first two equilibrium reactions um, because uh, this last step is, is highly favored due to the difference in pKa of the um, one butyne versus ammonia. And so the, the last step is that aqueous workup. So we simply add water to uh, the acetylide ion, and we can protonate it, and we end up with one butyne. So <clears throat> let's look at um, how we can take advantage of this isomerization and, uh, and, and do a synthesis. So um, let's look at the synthesis of uh, what do we have here. 2, 4, 6, so this is 3,3-dibromohexane. Uh, and I want to make, <clears throat> I want to make um, this um, dibrominated product from, you know, starting with 2-butyne. Uh, so notice I'm starting, you know, uh, one of the things when we think about how to synthesize something, uh, obviously our product has 6 carbons. Um, and what we want to start with has only four carbons. So somewhere we're going to have to um, add carbons together. So let's think about um, how we can synthesize this uh, geminal dihalide. And um, in order to do that, we can uh, look at the retrosynthetic analysis of, uh, of this reaction. So when I think about um, how, how do I make geminal dihalides, you should be thinking of making geminal dihalides from alkynes, right? So alkenes uh, can make um, vicinal dihalides. Alkynes can make either geminal dihalides or vicinal dihalides, geminal, geminal dihalides reacting two equivalents of HBr, vicinal dihalides reacting two equivalents of HBr, and, um, uh, and peroxides, right? So, but I, I know I can make this uh, from an alkyne, and uh, the alkyne that I can make this from is, uh, is this, right? So this is 3-hexyne. Um, uh, now notice I could have made it um, from 2-hexyne as well, but 2-hexyne in terms of uh, dibromination is going to give me a mixture of products. So there's two possible pathways. 3-hexyne works really well. Because of its symmetry, it's going to only give me one product uh, of the, the dibromide. Um, it also works out pretty nicely in that um, I know that I can make um, internal alkynes from terminal alkynes, uh, reacting uh, them with um, alkyl halides. And so um, I can make this from 1-butyne, plus uh, ethyl iodide, all right? So I could take, um, and I can uh, deprotonate 1-butyne, react it with ethyl bromide, and I can get 3-hexyne. And so now, how do I make 1-butyne? Uh, well, I can make 1-butyne from 2-butyne, uh, doing that um, basic isomerization. And so the uh, synthetic steps uh, for this, and, and writing out the reagents for this. Um, uh, in the first step with 2-butyne, uh, I need strong basic conditions, so I use sodium amide and ammonia, followed by my aqueous workup to give me 1-butyne. So now 1-butyne, I have to react it with ethyl iodide, right, to get the 3-hexyne, um, and so uh, I have to deprotonate it first with sodium amide, and then react that with ethyl iodide, and I get the resulting 3-hexyne. Um, and so now I simply have to uh, take 3-hexyne and react it with uh, two equivalents of HBr, and I get my product. And so you see this is a, a nice way of utilizing the um, alkyne isomerism and understanding how alenes 
fit into that picture as intermediates.